the commander surface. It was originally intended as the first flying model, but in fact it's, it's turned out to be far too heavy. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm going to measure the airflow over the surface, and I'm interested in several things. Um, first of all, the airflow directly down in the middle, how it's dispersed over the surface, and uh, to confirm the theory that the airflow is deflected over the surface by the commander effect. Um, and what I expect to happen, and expect to see, is a thin film of air moving over the surface and downwards and being dispelled off, off of the edge of the uh, disc. Um, what I'm also interested in is an effect that I call um, collateral airflow, and that is airflow which is not directly through the compeller, um, but is induced to flow over the surface by virtue of the fact that air is moving from the compeller over the surface. Um, there's absolutely no fear of this taking off and flying. This compeller is, is very small. Um, it's, it's not the best design by any means, but it, it will produce a fairly modest airflow over the surface, which should just tell me exactly what I want to know. Um, just to be absolutely certain, the thing is solidly bolted down to a large, heavy object there. And uh, as you probably observed, there's no torque countering device presently fitted. So um, the first thing that would happen if there was any possibility of this flying was that it would that, that the body of the aircraft would spin in the opposite direction to the motor. None of that happens. What I have is an airflow meter, the sort you'll find used in air conditioning systems. And this will typically measure uh, air flows from about uh, 50 feet per minute up to about 5,000 feet per minute. Um, have an oscilloscope, which is actually connected to a small Hall effect sensor near the motor, and there's a small screw here which you probably can't see. Every time it moves past the Hall effect sensor, it, it will register a pulse, and in that way I can measure speed um, fairly accurately. It's, it's not the best method, but it's a, it's a simple and visual method of doing it. Um, the motor that I've got here is a very small uh, DC motor driven from a variac, and I'll just wind it up so you can see what happens. It'll spin like that. Um, the noise level when it runs will obviously be higher than it is now, so you may not hear what I'm saying, but I, I'll, I'll try and remember to speak louder while I'm recording. Um, I've got the, the rectifier, it, I've got it rectified. The AC signal from the variac is rectified with, the, with a, a solid state bridge rectifier, and I've had it some smoothing capacitance, really just to get the motor running reasonably smooth. At the same time I'm doing that, I can measure the power being consumed by the motor, um, volts and amps, so that at some time uh, in the future when I start to model uh, with my computer the effect of this airflow, I, I know what power was used to, to produce it. I've also got a stroboscope, which um, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to use at the moment because it, because it will cause problems with the camera, but um, what I intend to, what I do from time to time is I monitor the compeller motion by means of the stroboscope and it can be a bit more revealing because the sort of thing that can happen at certain speeds because this compeller is not specifically designed for this project um, you can get um, oscillations in the veins of the, com the compeller which of course is not easy to accommodate. So there we are, the camera probably will register the oscilloscope flashing won't be able to see much more than that so the sequence of experiments is that I'm going to first of all record the airflow straight down. And, and to do that I'm going to run this disc at about 3000 RPM. Now it's a pretty solid disc and I know I should be wearing goggles but um, I, I'm fairly confident there's no problem and if anything it, it's going to hit me in the middle rather than in the face. I hope. So here goes. Wind up slowly. Around the right way. I'll try and 
two factors of feedback loops. And there's like two variations of each of them. One is I'm going to hold the thing vertically as best I can judge, and I'm still getting a reading. I'm now about two thirds of the radius down from the center of the dish. And I'm measuring just about just over 100. It's not a lot of difference here. I'm going to still sort it now to just cheating a bit. I don't think I should get a higher reading. It's fallen off actually. I, I was going to guess that it was going to get higher, but it doesn't. I'm, so, I'm getting a good reading here. Um, 100 feet per minute. I think the experiment out here. Stop with this just to make sure it's not cheating. Well, that's interesting because I'm now still getting a measurement. 70 feet per minute. So, one of the things I would have demonstrated to myself anyway is that air is being drawn centrally into the compeller. It's being uh, propelled radi radially. Um, and rather than going straight out of the disc, which I'm quite confident if this surface wasn't there, that's exactly what would happen. Um, the air is being deflected down by the Kyander effect, or wall attachment effect. Of this, of this disc. And this is so this is, is carefully shaped to provide the maximum deflection downwards. If this was significantly more curved, what would happen is that the airflow would detach from the surface and carry on going straight down. Um, or in other words, or, uh, another theory is that it would become more turbulent and, and uh, wouldn't be what I wanted to happen. Um, so the air has been forced down. So there, there are several co components of the lift equation, if you like. One is the suction of this thing, trying to suck the air down the reaction to it as you're pulling itself up. It's attached to the aircraft, so there's lift. The second aspect is the air that's accelerated out, the energy that's put into the air is being deflected downwards and it's producing a downward force because it's accelerating the air down. Again, that's a component of lift. But in addition to that, um, there is a collateral effect of air, which is not being drawn through the compeller, but is actually being drawn down onto the surface of the disk due to the airflow across it. Um, and so what I'm hoping is that the overall, there is a partial vacuum over the top of the surface of this aircraft which will contribute to it. That's the end of the experiment. And a highly satisfactory result. <laughs>